Welcome back to the channel guys. I don't know if you ever have those days where you get up to go diving and you just think, eh, can I really be bothered to go diving today? Today was one of those days. I couldn't even be bothered to have a shave properly. So we'll see how today goes. The weather's average, the wind's up a little bit, the visibility is not going to be great, but gotta have a punt anyway, hey? So see if there's any fish about today. Water actually feels pretty warm. Oh, might even get away with a five mil today. In other news, I finally sold my car in Australia and bought a car here. So hopefully that means a little bit more diving. Don't think I'll use the seven mil today. It's probably a bit warm for that. I'm just gonna go the nice five. Well, I can see my feet. That's a good start. After swimming out to the first spot, I saw a shoal of fish from the surface. I quickly anchored my float and took a dive. These pollock were up to around a kilogram and very sedate. I was hoping they'd made friends with some bass in the area. Seen lots of small pollock, but no signs of bass just yet. Hopefully they're not far away. Looks a bit fishier than the last couple, <laughs> the last couple times I've been here. It's gonna go a little bit further here, seen some better structure. There's gotta be a bass somewhere, eh? Surely. If not, one of these pollock might come home with me. This poor little Pollock had an unauthorised accessory. One of those Pollock just then had a fluorocarbon leader hanging out of its mouth there. It was a bit small to take, otherwise I would have taken it because it's probably not going to survive very long with that hanging out its mouth, but so it goes. That's, that's what uh, line fishing does sometimes. Unfortunately, you lose tackle and you lose fish, so that's another reason why spearfishing is a really sustainable way of taking a fish if it's practiced correctly. Finally something silver. Right then as I was crawling up the bottom there I saw two bass off in the distance and they were on the move. I don't think I spooked them, they were maybe just out hunting but I lined up on one but I wasn't close enough. I've Maybe I was, I don't know, but it's a good sign of C2. Hopefully find one in a hole so it's a bit easier to shoot. This place is made up of a labyrinth of holes, caves and ledges. This is where you would normally find the bass, but today they were empty. That big mullet will do nicely. I'd actually just changed my spear gun bands, which is probably why I missed, and the mullet came back to laugh in my face. I'd been out here for a few hours and hadn't had much luck, but it only takes one dive to change that.
I was starting to think I was about to give up. I was getting pretty cold there. I've been out here for about three and a bit hours. And then I saw this bit of structure out here and I thought I've got to give this a go. Got to put some time in and I just crept along the bottom around this big bit of rock. And I saw this guy coming straight at me. I thought about waiting for it to turn, but I thought it might spook. So I just, oh, it was so close that I just drilled it. And it looks like I've got out the gut, so I haven't ruined any of the fillets potentially, which is great, but definitely my biggest bass that I've shot in a very long time. I think it's probably around two, two and a half, three kilos. Maybe a bit better, I don't know, it's pretty fat. Funnily enough, I'm not very cold anymore, so I might have a little bit more of a look around. Maybe another 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna head in. I've got a fair bit of a swim before I reach shore. I didn't see any more bass, but I did find this conger eel. It's quite unusual to see the tail exposed because normally they sit with their head facing out of their lair. Well, that's it for today. I've got my bass. You're allowed to take two, but this one's pretty fat and healthy, so it's all I need for a while. Got a bit of a long swim in, just where these floats like this are absolutely priceless. Makes it so much easier. Highly recommended. It's pretty horrible and choppy right now, but can't complain with this thing. It started out as one of those days that was not looking promising. Didn't really feel like getting out of bed, but you just never know what's out there waiting for you if you just get out there and give it a go. It doesn't matter what what the conditions are like, you might just get lucky. I'm just going to quickly gut this guy, take the scales off. Just makes it a bit easier when you want to eat the skin to do it all down by the sea. girls are loving it. It's just so much easier to do the scaling and gutting at the beach. I really want to eat the wings off those bass. I'm going to show you how to do those. They are such an amazing little snack or dinner actually on a fish that size. I've left the skin on. I'll do that crispy skin because I love that. It's great for burgers as well. If you haven't seen my crispy skin video, you need to check that out because it's a game changer. Well, for me anyway, I think, I think you'd enjoy it. If you like eating fish, yeah. Yeah, you'd enjoy it, definitely. Check it out. As always, ice for our baby. First fish in the new whip. Back in the kitchen now with our two and a half kilo bass for all those playing on the Imperial system. That is five and a half pounds. And I've taken the scales off this fish down by the seaside just so I can cook that skin on the fish fillets really nicely and crispy. And these are the wings that I was talking about before. I've done these on my channel before, but it was quite a while ago. And you can see this beautiful fold of meat here that often gets thrown away. And I'll take it all the way down to that belly flap. You can see that that's really nice and chunky and that'll be a, a beautiful meal for two of us tomorrow night. First stage to any filleting endeavor is a sharp knife. I like to run down here along the backbone. Popping out over the tail. And then I come back up. That there is a beautiful fillet and I haven't ruined any of the meat with my shot. It's gone all through the gut cavity, which is quite fortunate. Got the skin on. All that's left to do is cut this up into meal sized pieces and take the pin bones out. Taking the wings off is extremely simple and a must if you're filleting a bass. Uh, that's about as complicated as it gets. You're actually just going to the end of the ribs that you can see there. There are your two finished bass wings. You want to check that the stomach contents don't have any parasites in them like worms. And if they do, you can freeze them before eating, but it is a bit off-putting. So if it's got parasites and worms in the gut cavity, it's best not to risk it. Although I think freezing does actually kill them and you could probably just eat them anyway. 
If you've never taken the wings off a fish before, I encourage you to do it because it gives you basically an extra meal out of the fish, well for me anyway, because once you take the sides off and if you throw the carcass out, you're just wasting so much meat. You see on these things there is so much meat to eat on them, so make sure you try and utilize as much of the fish as you can. Normally my preference is to do these things on the barbecue, but I don't have a barbecue where I live, so I have lots of noisy people outside. This is the indoor method and it involves just a little bit of corn flour and we're going to shallow fry those and they will be crispy and beautiful. It really is as simple as this. Once you see the fish cooking up into the belly side, you can then flip it over. This is one of those times that you could probably go a little bit heavier on the colouring. You can probably crisp it up a little bit more than you usually would. If you overcook it, it's not a big deal on this. You kind of just want that crispy outside. You want to crisp up those wings and the pectoral fins as well. These guys are done. I like to drain them on some kitchen roll before I serve them, otherwise they can get a bit oily. Lost a bit of the fin there. This is as basic as it gets for a salad. This is just kale with olive oil rubbed into it and it has some cherry tomatoes, salt and pepper. That's it. This is the fish wing here. I like to put a nice big squeeze of lime or lemon over the top of that and bon appetit. It's kind of a meal I like to eat with my fingers, but you can see how nice and cooked and white that meat is in there and there's just loads of it on this fish. Mm. Nice and crispy on the outside. That's exactly what you're going for. As always, thanks so much for watching this video, guys. As I'm about to tuck into this sea bass, I realized that, you know what, you're not gonna shoot fish in your bedroom. You have to go out diving, even if the conditions aren't ideal. And even if you don't feel like it, like me, and I've still got the beard because I couldn't be bothered shaving it off to go diving for this, but I got a result in the end and it just goes to show you never know what the ocean's gonna give. And as I've said before, that's what keeps me coming back. See you guys on the next video.